welcome to the Rex Corner. I have Jay Bednar back. He's been on there before, before. We had some good conversations about training. He's very knowledgeable about the body, about body mechanics, about training, diet, nutrition, the whole ball of wax of what makes you better at what you do. Right, Jay? That's right. You know this stuff. I know it. And he sells real estate too, so get a lot while you're young. That's right. I got a lot all through high school. <laughs> <laughs> so what I wanted to talk about, and we've had, I had Doug Brignoli on here who knows a lot about all this stuff too, but there's always different points of view. Sure. And I talked to you one day, and you were drinking something, and I said, what is it? You said glycogen. Right. I want to know more about what that does and why you take it and, and when you need it, because I was under the assumption, like I told you, that, and you guys know this, after the workout, we always have a, um, a post-workout drink. So I would always take protein to go back into my muscle. I figured, okay, that's going to do the job. But then I come to find out that it's not really what it need, I need to do. I need to do glycogen. Well, both. Together? Together, yes. Won't one, that one won't take away from the other? No, not at all. Actually... Quite the opposite. It's a, it creates a the the, the glucose um, when, when you eat it, it, it really creates a, a transporting effect because okay. um, the body the the muscles, especially post exercise, when they're glycogen depleted, are really going to suck up that glucose to increase their glycogen stores again. Okay. So you intake the glucose because your body's looking for that, but you kind of sneak the amino acids in with it. So if you take an amino, and, and what I really like to do is actually do like a uh, essential amino or a branch chain amino acid drink with the glucose as opposed to like a full whey protein okay to really transport those those amino acids into the muscle quickly okay um, because the, it'll kind of just piggyback along with the glucose into the muscle so it really get those nutrients in there quick how much amino acid do you take a scoop it, I, I kind of do well I mean, for me I do I like to do 15 grams of BCAAs pre and 15 grams of BCAAs post. Okay. And I'll usually throw a scoop of protein in there as well, just as kind of an extra I'm with overlap, you. you know, but. Like an extra burger patty. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, so. Do you, do you take a pre-workout drink? Yeah. And absolutely. what's in that? Uh, any kind of, any kind of nitric oxide, so okay. arginine base, or and then some kind of caffeine. Okay, arginine, I have plain arginine, and I've tried yeah. the past two weeks, you get a terrific pump with it. Absolutely. I also heard you get the same thing out of beet juice. Well, beet juice has a um, very, very, uh, or, I'm sorry, it has a great effect on nitric oxide levels in the body. So take beet juice, bam, instantly get those up, which arginine, once it goes in the body, is converted to nitric oxide. Okay. So it's the same effect. Same effect. Yeah, exactly. I tried the beet juice for a while. Jerry Branham told me about it, and, and yeah. it, it tastes like V8 juice. It's no big deal. A lot of the, a lot of the new pre-workouts um, are in, including beet, dry beet juice powder. Extract? Yep, exactly. I didn't know that. Proteins? No, 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 the pre-workouts. Pre-workouts. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, so you're going to go to the gym. You had a breakfast. Yes. What'd you have? Usually six whole eggs with a half cup of oatmeal. Okay, and... standard. Yeah. Okay, then you have a pre-workout drink? Yeah. Right after breakfast or before you leave? Um, well, I normally work out later in the day. Okay. But, well, I guess let's on the, just, week on the weekends I work out in the morning. So, okay. yeah, have my breakfast, and then maybe half hour to an hour later I'll have my pre-workout. Basically drink it as soon as I walk out, right before I'm walking out the door to the gym. Okay. So I do too. Yeah. By the time I get to the gym, I'm ready to go. Exactly. Do you put the glycose or uh, glucose or glycogen in that drink as well? Yeah, in the off season, yes. Um, I, I I will do a, a small <clears throat> amount, um, but it's not always. I, I don't know how to explain. That's it. not really where the point that you need it. No. Okay. Uh -huh. No, because you're I you know from the oatmeal that I've had in the morning, I'm already going to have my right. glycogen stores pretty well. Okay. Because you know I just got done sleeping and everything, so I'm not. Right. It's not like I was expending a lot of energy. So. Right. I sometimes will if I feel like I need it, but most of the time, no. And, and if I do, it's just a small amount. Uh, I'd say probably 25% of what I would do post-workout, okay. if I do. All right, so right after your workout is when you want that. Exactly. See, I was told also, this is going to sound funny, I, I don't know if you guys ever heard this or not, but I was told that eat gummy bears. Well, it's sugar. It's sugar. Yeah. And I laughed. Yeah. And they said, no, it works. It does. It's the same thing. What about grapes? A anything. Any, I mean, you, you're gonna with, with, any, with type of fruit, you're gonna get um, a lower a lower rate or on the glycemic index, so you're gonna get a lower rate of absorption of the glucose. Okay. So going with something like a gummy bears, where it's a processed sugar, your body digests it like that. Okay. Which is why stuff like that is so bad for you when you're not post workout because your body doesn't need the instant rush of glucose, so your body instantly converts it if the glycogen store is already depleted, instantly converts it to fat. Okay. So this is the only time you could really do that and get away with it. Yeah, the best. I mean, 
carbs are okay in the morning as well because you're somewhat depleted from sleeping because you haven't eaten in eight hours. This is true. But not as much as post-workout. So, and plus your insulin sensitivity is a lot higher in the morning. So you have a, a higher or a higher a better chance of storing fat in the morning with morning carbohydrates as well. Okay. As opposed to if you ate carbohydrates later in the day. So I didn't know that. So the best time, 100%, is post-workout for carbohydrates. Okay. For and, sugar. And later in the day, no. Later in the day, you can have carbs. Okay. Just make sure they're slow digesting. Okay. You know, okay. oatmeal. What about stuff like wax and maize? Wax and maize is great post-workout. Okay. You know, um, the 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 most popular one right now, and it, because it's kind of the the best, the most efficient source of glucose right now for post-workout is uh, highly branched cyclic dextrin, because your body can just it, it it's it's absorbed into the bloodstream right through the stomach, doesn't even need to be digested. It's right in the bloodstream. Where do you get that? You can order it on a lot of a lot of sites. A lot of uh, I, I know I think Gaspari makes one right now. Um, and uh, is there a, a, a trade name for it, or do they go by the whole name? No, just look for branch cyclic dextrin. Okay. Yeah. Works. Yeah, it's great. Okay, I, I was really curious about this because I, I did that today. I worked out. And I took the uh, wax maze after. Yeah. Because after a workout, when you deplete yourself, I don't know about you, but I get really tired. Yeah. Well, that's what, what that is, is your glycogen <clears throat> stores are depleted. That's right. why you feel, a lot of, like, runners will call it hitting the wall. Right. Or whatever. Right. And that's just when your body's depleted its glycogen stores. Because mm -hmm. your body holds glycogen in your muscles and mm -hmm. in your liver. Mm -hmm. So once you're, once you're running low on glucose, your body starts taking away from those glycogen stores, converting into glucose to use for energy. Once those are gone, you're pretty much spent. This is off the wall because I wouldn't do the same. But what if somebody was just to drink sugar water? That's, that's great. Same principle. Yeah. What, what do you think Gatorade is? Yeah, it is. It's sugar water with... Sodium and potassium added to it. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I, I had a friend years ago who, uh, that was many years ago, he, he called me up. He said, hey, Rick, I said, what? He says, I found out how to put on muscle. I said, how's that? He says, well, he says, after I work out, I have my protein and I eat a piece of chocolate cake. There you go. I said, no, you're going to be kidding. He says, no, it's working. Yeah. yeah. It's working. But there's actually, there's actually some uh, substance to that as well because cake's also going to have a high amount of fat. Right. And when you in introduce sugar and fat into the body, you get an even higher insulin spike. So the insulin is driving all those nutrients into the muscle. So you're going to get a, a higher response for the, for the amino acids. I, I'm, I'm going to start trying. You guys might want to try this because it's worth looking into. I mean, I, I know so many people and a lot of you write to me. You don't even eat. You know, you go yeah. to the gym, you don't even eat. Eat before or after. I can't imagine. That's like running right. my car on an empty tank of gas. That's it. You've got to have the fuel to make it work. And and, and I understand this little spark of, of glycogen after you train now. I'm I definitely going to start doing that. Absolutely. I haven't done it. And I, I got in good shape when I didn't do it. But I may get in better shape when I do do it. Yeah. When I do do it, absolutely. And, you know, and this isn't anything <clears throat> new. It's, it's. I guess it's somewhat newer in the bodybuilding community because they were so stuck on low carbohydrates yes. for so long. But I mean, the the scientists in Florida for Gatorade figured this out in the seventies. Yeah, that's why they came out with Gatorade. That's why they had a, a high sugar drink to replenish the athletes after their event. Yeah, I, I didn't know that it worked that way though. I mean, yeah. I didn't know that it replenished the muscle. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's exactly. It's just replenishing your glycogen stores as well as your electrolytes. That's all it's doing. I bought some Pedialyte. Yeah, very good. You know, it's like six dollars a bottle, right? Absolutely. But I found out at the ninety-nine cent store for a dollar a bottle, so I bought eight bottles. Ninety-nine cent store is great. You can't beat that because it is <laughs> electrolytes. Yeah, and Pedialyte's great. I, I even think it's a higher quality drink Which because it's designed for infants. Is right. that also for uh, after a workout too, or no? Yeah, you can use that absolutely. You can use it just like that. It has sugar in it. Yeah, absolutely. Just well, it's you know to me it's a higher quality Gatorade. That's very very interesting. Okay, what are your views on pro hormones? Pro hormones are. Um, controversial. I know they are. That's why I asked. <laughs> I'm, uh, I mean, I guess it's, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of them, okay. to be honest. It's, uh, they're, they're very toxic on your system. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, people can get very good benefits from it, um, but then it, it kind of comes back to the, the steroid issue. Yeah. And to me, it's, it may even be safer to do steroids in low amounts than it would to be doing pro-hormones, because your body has to process it through your kidneys and liver right. multiple times, as right. opposed to with the with the the anabolic steroids going directly to your to your system. Right. So, uh, I'm not a big fan of pro hormones. Um, I remember when I was in college, I did take them. You know, I, everyone we, you we started it? trying. Things. Did you notice much from it? Yeah, I mean, I definitely did notice gains. Absolutely, but then again, I was 19 years old, and yeah, I was probably going to notice gains anyway. So I, I don't yeah. really have a reference point to as how far, much they help. As far as being toxic, what do you look for if you take them? If you're going to have any side effects. Uh, I really, the only thing you can do is blood, blood test. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I, it would be, yeah, it'd be hard to imagine that you would get like, um, 
the side effects that like an alcoholic would where you get like the yellowing of the yeah. skin pigment and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I, it would be hard to imagine that that would take place okay. for just doing pro hormones. Yeah. I mean, if you did it for an extended period of time, like six, seven years or so, oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know, but, but really blood tests is what, just how you're going to tell. Actually, what are they? Where do they come from? Pro hormones are basically just a, uh, a, a mo modified testosterone molecule. Okay. So it, it's got an extra carbon attached to it or extra atom. So when your body, when you digest it, your body actually cleaves off that extra extra molecule and converts it to directly to testosterone or another useful hormone that the body can can use to promote muscle growth. Okay. Yeah. So that's how it works. Exactly. Um, Whereas you know, so think of if you're if you if you're taking a testosterone based steroid, you're injecting testosterone into your body. Right. Whereas with those, you're taking a pill that mimics testosterone, but your body has to go through a process to turn it into testosterone. Right. You're basically just creating more work for your in internal system. I see. It's going to the whole processing system. Exactly. Um, it's not illegal. It's not. Some of them become illegal when they realize they're working too well for people. <laughs> so, or you know, I mean, the, you know, there was all the all the stuff with the the Andrew back in the day with Mark McGuire and all those guys were yeah. doing it and. But uh, eventually they'll turn them illegal. It's just a matter of time before the FDA actually gets to it. So I heard actually they are. They're, yeah. they're on it now. Exactly. So. Uh, one more thing. Uh, I want to know what your views are on creatine. Because I get people asking me, what about creatine, 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 creatine? Okay. What about it? You know, I kind of go back and forth on creatine, to be honest. I, 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 always, I always take it in, in minimal amounts. But one thing I'll, I'll say, you don't ever need to load it. Don't ever go through a loading phase as everything. You used to have to do that years ago. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't, I don't, I've never seen the benefit to that. Of course, you're going to gain weight because you're loading your body with creatine. So you're going to be retaining more water. Mm -hmm. So you're going to look a little bit bigger. You're going to be heavier on the scale. But right. to me, there's no actual benefit to loading it. Right. Um, so yeah, your body, I mean, creatine is a great supplement. It's, it's been studied and it has absolute, um, you know, benefits in terms of increasing ATP, which is used for energy in the body. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's definitely useful. I just, I think people go overboard with it and use too much of it. There's a pill that called be... creocoline. Yeah. Uh, I take that one, a little purple pill. Yeah. That's actually a really good, a really good source of creatine. It's like a time release. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, and it's, it, your body is actually, actually processes that a lot better than just creatine monohydrate. Okay. And I also get a lot of in, in, uh, digestional, di digestive tract distress. From taking creatine monohydrate, a lot, a lot of, people, of people do. A lot of people experience di yeah. diarrhea from it and stuff too. So yeah. creatine is a great, great way to go about it. And you usually have a little bit less, uh, less water retention with it too. So I really like the creatine. Yeah, I take one a day before I work out. That's it. Yeah. Um, as far as um, arginine, daily basis. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's uh, just an amino, right? Just an amino acid. Yeah, absolutely. It's and, and it's it's great for a, a lot of things. You know, even outside of bodybuilding, <clears throat> like reducing blood pressure. Because it helps open your blood vessels, so it oh, dilates them. Yeah, it di it's a it's a vasodilator. That's okay. exactly what it does. Okay. Well, nitric oxide is, but you take arginine. No, no, it. I get that. But yeah, it's a, it's a vasodilator, so it, it's uh, <clears throat> you know it's it's kind of how they came up with the basis for Viagra. I did. I they heard were that. researching Viagra as a um, cardiovascular medicine, right? And they noticed the other effects <laughs> of it, which were even better for some people. Exactly. So. <laughs> what about lysine? Lysine, uh, another another amino acid, definitely. Definitely beneficial. I mean, you need it, but you get every, you get it with any kind of chicken or any protein you eat, any kind of source of protein, you're going to get lysine. And I don't think you need it in excess amounts. I heard uh, it extends the life of the protein in your body. I, I hadn't heard that, yeah. but uh, my big one is leucine. Leucine, maybe that's it. Leucine, yeah, yeah. yeah. Leucine, leucine is a, is one of the branch chain amino acids. Right. Great for um, increasing what's what's called the mTOR pathway, which is known to pr promote muscle growth. So that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So leucine, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. leucine. Isn't it normally in your uh, branched chain amino's anyway? Yeah, it is. Is it in protein as well? Of course. I, well, I don't mean that. All I mean, amino's have, or all proteins. No, no, I know, I know that. But we got companies that make protein. We got companies that make protein. Yeah. You know, right. some of the people tell you what they got in it. Some people don't have what they have in it. Right? <laughs> That's true. So um, when you buy like a whey protein or a casein, it's supposed to have all the amino acids and leucine being one of them. Right. If you take it in a bigger amount, is it more beneficial to to uh, make the lasting power of that protein or not? I think so. Okay. That's why I take. Um, additional BCAAs on top of my protein intake. Okay. Because I do like the leucine in, in higher amounts. What's so, the last meal of your day and what time is it? Usually about a half hour before I go to bed is usually six whole eggs with some red palm oil and maybe a couple slices of turkey bacon. Is there any reason why you read red palm oil? Palm oil? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> what does that do? Uh, red palm oil is just another source of fat. Um, very good. It's a high saturated fat source. Uh, very, pretty similar to coconut oil. Yeah. Um, 
which you know it, people have been researching the, the benefits the of that a lot yeah. lately. Yeah, I do that. Um, I, and I kind of interchange it with coconut oil. So sometimes I have coconut oil. It's supposed but, to be good for your brain. Which one? Coconut oil. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of medium chain triglycerides, which are very good for your brain. So yeah. Very interesting. Well, I think you answered my questions, and um, this is something that I wanted to point out to the viewers out there because you guys train hard, you eat right, you're trying to get the best possible results from your training and your diet, and a lot of you don't know how to do it, but I mean, Jay knows, and, and Doug Brignoli knows, and I'm bringing these guys on because they can explain it probably better than I can. Uh, I have my questions, and I have my knowledge, but I think they look into it a little bit more. Do you have any contests coming up? Um, hopefully. I'm still re kind of recovering from my shoulder surgery. That's right, you had shoulder surgery. Yeah, and it's 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 still a little unstable. Really? I'm having, still having a little bit of issues with it, but I'm, I'm getting getting back there. My weight's back up to 250 now, and um, hopefully, I, I'd like to try and do like the Excalibur at the end of the year this year, um, but we'll see. We'll just see how I progress. What, what shoulder was it? This my left shoulder. Yeah, full range. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, the range the range of motion's back. It's just weakness. You came back pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. It came it came back pretty good. It's just. This is the last little nagging part that I can't quite get away from. So, so we'll, we'll get there. It, it's a, it was a big injury and it'll take some time. So. But thanks for being here. Absolutely. I know you have to go sell some real estate, but it's the right time out for me and I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time on Rick's Morning. Baby, see you next time.